Hello there, it's Susie Walker here from Psychologies Magazine on our one o'clock broadcast and today I'm joined by Lucy Anderson Wood, psychotherapist, storyteller and founder of the World Storytelling Cafe and today we want to talk really about how stories can help us heal, stories can help us um, find a new way forward for ourselves and for the world I think. But Lucy, uh, welcome first of all. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, tell us about why storytelling is so important right now. Well, I think right now, because we have the um, pandemic, COVID-19, um, people are kind of feeling quite afraid and um, not quite sure about this new world that we're living in. So. From the point of view of pure distraction, stories can be quite helpful in trying to um, reduce stress. But from a more serious point of view, I think starting to view stories as um, kind of part of the fabric of our lives. I mean, if, if you view our lives as a piece of cloth, then you could view stories as embroidery on the cloth. And I think um, if we start to realize how important stories are for our lives and how we, more importantly than that, how we think about our lives, how we talk to ourselves about our lives, how we talk to others, our family members, our friends, how, how we think every minute and every day about our lives. The kind of story that we tell ourselves about what's happening in our lives can make the difference between feeling like a victim or feeling like we're okay and we're actually a survivor or we're, we're actually pretty strong. Um, so I think stories um, are, are really, really essential. Um, it's, it's a way of framing what's happening in the world. And I think right now we need to have very powerful frames about what's happening in our lives and what's happening in our communities and the world at large. And if, if we have a, a victim mentality or if we have um, a very negative story about what's going on, then we, I think, you know, it causes a lot of pain and suffering unnecessarily. And it makes us lose, lose sight of what a wonderful world we actually live in and how um, there are so many things to be grateful for in this world. So, I think, I think from that point of view, having stories is, is really, really important. I've been talking to um, one of my team this morning and we were talking about the COVID-19 and we we're talking about how um, kind of the uncertainty and we both got a bit teary because of everything else that's happening in the yeah. world and what could we do and how can we help and how can we be a positive influence in the world. Um, and but we were both aware of the stories that we were telling ourselves that were negative and that were not useful or, um, and beating ourselves up and going down this terrible negative spiral of beating ourselves up so how do we start with creating a new story for ourselves i know that you've got this brilliant um world storytelling cafe uh, which all the links are below yeah. and you've got these great new kind of recordings haven't you like yeah. like ways of going on a kind of quest which which i love i mean how do we how do we start where do we start with creating yeah. a new story for ourselves yeah so uh, usually the best place to start is with awareness so if you're aware of what you're doing uh, if you're aware that you're falling into a victim pattern and you notice that you're blaming everybody around you for life's um difficulties um, then that's that's a really important first step. And a lot of people never actually get to that step. They carry on throughout their whole lives blaming other people for their particular situation. So awareness um, and understanding is the next step is really, really important. Um, so understanding where these feelings or these attitudes have come from so some of them could some of our attitudes could be extremely legitimate so if you've been abused or bullied as a child then um, these feelings of victimhood 
have got a, a serious reason, um, a cause underneath them. But the important thing is to realize, well, that, that's what, what's happened in the past. And um, it wasn't probably wasn't your fault as a child that um, these things happened to you. Um, it's it's uh, the child. Well, it is absolutely wasn't your fault. I mean, Sorry? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't your fault. It absolutely wasn't your fault, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, then, yeah, yeah. but then as you're growing up, if you start to, or if you continue to think of yourself as um, a victim of circumstance or a victim of real things that have happened to you, rather than uh, reframing your situation as a survivor, that whatever happened to you was very wrong, and hopefully, um, you know, maybe in school, if you've been bullied, it could have been sorted out, um, or if it was more serious, hopefully the legal system might have supported you. But very often, people are left with stories decades later where they're still feeling like a victim and they've kind of wasted those years. So, in some situations, there is no way of bringing um, the bully to justice. And really, what you're doing is, for those decades that you've been thinking about it and labeling yourself as the bullied or the victim, you've actually been torturing yourself much more than the original um, bully. So it's, I think it's really important to then decide, okay, what am I gonna do? Am I going to spend the rest of my life um, feeling like a victim and feeling anger inside my body? Or am I gonna take responsibility for how I'm feeling? and um, not necessarily forgiving this, the person or the people or the institution, but taking responsibility and for yourself, forgiving the situation so that you're not holding on to negative feelings of anger. And, and then w one of the things that um, I find really helpful is to then start to explore the different parts of yourself. So particularly if it's something um, and it very often is, something that's happened to you during your uh, early years. If you can go back and through the subconscious mind or through whatever method you choose to connect with the child part of you who's feeling these emotions that are very dysfunctional, very unhelpful for you. Um, and one of the things that um, we do or I do in the My Story section of the World Storytelling Cafe is I uh, present visualizations, which are basically journeys for people to go into their um, subconscious mind and to find their inner child or to find different parts of themselves. And then they meet their inner child and talk with their inner child and maybe play with their inner child and uh, heal the relationship between themselves and the inner child if that's necessary. And and generally, um, people find that very, very empowering to heal that hurt. And then um, it's, it's not a matter of once you've done that, you're sorted, <laughs> you're fixed. In, in my experience, it's, it's something that is very healing, but with most of these things, it's a journey. And um, there are always new events, new um, new opportunities for pain or suffering um, in, in this life. You know, there's always people um, dying or getting sick or um, things happening, as well as joyful things. And so it's a constant practice of coming back to the central part of you and I symbolize that as the heart where the, the child, the inner child, that part of you resides. And, and I think um, in my experience, the best way to do that is through the subconscious mind and through visualizations, either gentle visualizations or um, deep hypnosis. There are many other ways sure. that other therapists use. Mm. Yeah, at Psychologies, we, what we do is we're a platform for many, many ways of healing. Uh, and what we try to do to our readers um, as we're interviewing you and we're, you know, we interview lots of different methodologies. Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. some of my friends say to me, I'd rather stick hot irons in my eyes than go to therapy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, that's... And that's why yeah. we also have ways of you know, swimming in the cold sea or there's many, many ways yeah, to yeah. start the healing. As opposed 
what we're committed to at Psychologies is very much this idea of how do we start on the healing journey? And what I heard you say earlier was this, first of all, the acknowledgement of whatever pain that may, someone may be, be suffering and to acknowledge any abuse or uh, acknowledge, you know, not to kind of to minimize that, just to no. acknowledge it and say, no. this happened. Yeah. But then as you say, what can happen is that um, what we don't want to do is disempower ourselves. You know, what we want is to empower ourselves and go, okay, yeah. this happened and this was terrible. Yeah. We're not going to carry that darkness around with us for the rest of our lives and find a way through. And that's why, I mean, I know um, on my own journey that stories have created a brilliant new, I'm a very creative person, so storytelling, finding a new story to tell about my own journey, my own pain, we've all got it, whatever that is, is such a powerful way of doing that. Really, really great. Yes. I mean, it's um, almost as so if um, we're sort of structured, our brains are structured in a way to be receptive to the elements of a story. So um, Jung proposed that um, stories are basically in our DNA in a bit like, I don't know if you know, um, Chomsky suggested that there's a language acquisition device that we're all born with. Um, and that's how children all throughout all cultures learn how to speak, how to communicate. There's almost like a grammatical system that's pre-wired. And um, Carl Jung suggested that stories um, through the collective unconscious are basically um, pre-wired in, into our brains. And that's why every culture throughout history, throughout the world, um, uses stories as a way of communicating and passing on, empowering, and, and also um, not just empowering stories, but also stories to try and keep people in their place. You know, uh, so the, the stories, we, we've always used them in, in this culture, sort of stories to prevent children from um, straying away from the home. So, you know, Little Red Riding Hood and um, the wolf, um, stories to stop children from being lazy. So the story of the three little pigs and the pig who was lazy and just chose the easy way of building his house out of straw. He was the one that got gobbled up. <laughs> the diligent one, um, you know, had what society would view as good values. The diligent one survived. So it's 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 really it's a cultural um kind of pervasive um way of helping us to join our culture in a, in a positive and meaningful way i think i mean I think what's happening in the world right now uh, no 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 i i absolutely agree i mean what's happening right now is to look at the stories you know historical stories that we've been telling ourselves and to question them and to challenge them and then you know the journey forward is to create new stories to tell um, authentic stories to tell in terms of a healing but there is you know there is as you said from a therapeutic sense it's it's acknowledging pain and yeah. acknowledging abuse at the beginning before yeah. we can go on to tell a story and yeah. look at the story that's been told and say all these stories that have been there to perhaps manipulate us or to you know that we've taken on as our own without ever questioning them yeah. so I feel it, you know whether it's COVID um, or for Black Lives Matters, it's about creating new stories going forward yeah. that are one acknowledging pain and creating really powerful um, new stories going forward. I think you yeah. know it's. I mean, I'm a great fan of Joseph Campbell, and he talks about the the mono myths and the hero's journey. But I've been also working um, with coaches around the heroine's journey, and the heroine's journey is very much about going into the unconscious and the subconscious mind, which yeah. I know that you, when we start working with that, it's it can be, the journey can be a yeah. lot quicker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one, one of the most powerful things I think that we can do is to um, create forgiveness for, for things that have happened or people that have, um, done something they, they may not even be aware that they've done something but so for for example most of us have some sort of feelings of negativity towards one or other parent um but as parents we can we can never be good enough we can never give our children as much love as they really want or maybe need and um so 
being able to kind of meet up with your parent within your subconscious mind, um, e even if they've passed away, and to basically tell them the ways in which you felt that they fell short. And you might do that in a really angry way, or you might do it in an understanding way, but to ultimately come to the point where you're able to feel some kind of forgiveness, some understanding first as to why was it that they behaved in this way. Usually it's because their parent behaved to them in a similar way or um, in, in a way that meant that they didn't get a, as much love as they needed. So to be able to talk through your, just in your imagination um, to create this forgiveness with your father, forgiveness your mum and also to share um, the gratitude for the things that they've done right even if that's purely that they gave birth to you that that, that, that might be the only thing that you feel that they've done right you know you know say if a mum was um, you know uh, very seriously um, unable to care for the child gave the child up before before the child met them or, or whatever whatever the reason is so forgiveness is not sometimes people say oh I'm never going to forgive them because they've done this or this person doesn't deserve my forgiveness and what people don't realize is if you hold on to the anger it doesn't hurt the person that you're angry with at all really uh, unless you go and hit them or you know destroy their slash their yeah. tires or something like that it's not going to hurt them but it's going to eat away at your very being and and in terms of physiological health there's there's a lot of evidence that feeling anger and um you know that sort of pure uh, rage even is very detrimental to to our physical um as well as our mental well-being and it um, can affect our immune system very negatively. So it's even if you think, oh, I don't really want to forgive them, if you make the effort and you manage to do that, um, even forgiving the situation um, is is hugely empowering. Um, and, you know, I, f I found that my, myself, um, you know, forgiving, I mean, I, I had pretty nice parents, but, you know, the, definitely were some areas where you know physical abuse was the norm when I was growing up so um you know having to forgive um you know my parents or my father actually for for um hitting me what I thought was quite a lot um that that was a massive thing for me it really made me grow up and um feel like an equal with him rather than feeling um, intimidated, even even though he's passed away. So, I think getting to that level of forgiveness um, it allows you to love the other person that you felt angry with, and that's very healing for yourself. Um, so it's it's. I mean, I can't emphasize enough forgiveness, and then feeling gratitude is hugely beneficial. We all we all know this. This is quite common knowledge now. But it's got a huge there's effect so on physical health too. Yeah. Sorry. Mm. There's a there's a lot of research on, on on both of those things, and I love the work that uh, Desmond Tutu um, has done on on forgiveness. And I I'm mm. I, I'm a massive fan of processes that he can work not just on a personal therapeutic level, but also um, culturally and uh, you know in wide. So there's a lot of work to do. I think it's it's hard and it's complicated isn't it i mean it's it's yeah. not an easy thing to do to you know, but what i again what psychology is all about is about hope and you know that there yeah. is a way you may you may not know what that yeah. way is but um by featuring you know therapists and counselors and coaches and methodologies that you know what if whatever if therapy is not for you there, you know, maybe look at the, the storytelling cafe or look at yeah. um, sea swimming or yeah. there is always a way forward no matter yeah. how dark it's been in your past. But, yes. you know, meditate, you know however yeah. much you suffer. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I interrupt you. I was just going to say meditation um, for me is meditation. one of the most powerful ways of um, coming back to forgiveness. Um, so centering 
myself and using you know mindfulness meditation and also um you know the, the meta bravna the loving kindness meditation is incredibly helpful so you know that you were saying that it, it can take a very long time to get to this point but sometimes i mean that's a story in itself so if, if we have this idea that oh it's going to take a very long time we've got to a yeah. lot sometimes yeah. um strangely sometimes a massive transformation can happen just like that in a in a second where you suddenly have an insight that actually that person who I've been feeling negatively towards for the last 30 years is actually a victim of their own situation and I can understand them and I can feel compassion for them and I can actually love them and that can happen in a very short space of time and when you feel that love in a meditation or in a visualization it's it's incredibly healing for yourself and it could be that you go on to heal um a relationship say with a, a sibling or a parent or a child even um that that really hasn't been addressed for decades sometimes yeah yeah so it, i think it's I mean, important to it's going to be difficult and it's going to take a long long time because sometimes it really doesn't <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased that you're challenging me. I mean, that has been my story, and that's the yeah. story I have told myself. So I love the idea that maybe there's a, a, a new way or a different way. I no, will definitely it's, check out the meditation. It's, it's been it. my experience. You know, <laughs> it's taken a very long time. I'm still on a journey. I don't want to give you the impression that, um, you know, I've, I've sorted myself out like that. No, I'm just saying that there are some things, sometimes, sometimes there can be a slow rise, and I really slow progression with um trying to understand something and and handle it and accept the shadow parts of yourself for example but sometimes there can be an amazing transformative moment um and it, it can yeah, feel quite yeah. magical um and I, i've had a few yeah. of those in my life but it still still doesn't stop me from um definitely uh experiencing definitely. pain and you know, having things come back to haunt me that I thought I'd address. So I, I don't want to give the wrong impression there that there's no quick fix um, for, you know, the, uh, the issues of life. <laughs> sure. I, and I think, I mean, I understand you, and I, but it's good to kind of challenge the story that, you, you know, that I think the main point here is um, healing is possible yeah. and it's seek help. Um, seek support, find a path that feels authentic for you, um, you know, and you can dip your toe in with the World Storytelling Cafe, which I know that um, you've co-founded. There's some, you know, free meditations that you can try. So there's there's always a way, there's always a way to start on this journey. And I, th I mean, my belief is the more we can heal ourselves, the more we can heal the world. So yeah. I think it's, for me, it's always about it starting with the inner work yeah. um, and going there. But Thank you so much for your time today. That was absolutely fantastic. Great to hear yeah, and um, find out all the all the things about creating your own story, listening to stories at the story cafe, uh, storytelling cafe below. Lucy, thanks so much for your time today. No, thank you. It's been really nice talking to you. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks.